What is up, my fellow Cheebits? Today, I'm here to bring all of you the weekly anime review of Fairy Tale. Now, with this week's episode, a lot of setup for the final act of this arc. We come to find out that Face is still activated and ongoing. Minerva versus Eriza's fight kind of concludes with this episode. Along with finding out more about Minerva, coming to find out that Mardgear is free, and also the twin dragon slayers have arrived to the battlefield. And then also a bunch of other stuff with like Wendy cutting her hair. So quite a bit of content was in this week's episode of Fairy Tale, and that gets me kind of hyped because I'm glad to see how Fairy Tale is able to just add so much content in one episode. Because I know a lot of shows, when it comes to some ongoing shonen, tend to be very slow when it comes to a lot of content. And to see how Fairy Tale, even though it's a long running series, still does stuff like this, it makes me very happy. So, anyways, enough of that. When it comes to this episode, talking about the beginning first. We come to find out that Face is still activated, and Face is still a threat. And if you remember, Face is going to cause it where magic is gone. And if that happens, well, let's just say Fairy Tail can't fight back, and the demons pretty much fucking win. And so this is a huge issue right now, because we saw about 2,000. Like, we come to find out that Dordon Bolt, he says, like, there's 2,000 faces. Because if that is correct and there is 2,000 faces, that's a pretty bad issue right now, because... That would mean that it was hard enough just taking down one. Like, we remember what Wendy had to go through just to take down one of them faces. Imagine what it would take to probably take down, like, 2,000. So, right here, very huge issue that was just brought up. And you have to wonder, with all these events going on right now, with Fairy Tail fighting, you know, Tartarus, how the fuck are they supposed to stop face right now? Because if there's 2,000, how the hell are they going to get over there and destroy him? So... Right there, pretty bad issue going on. Along with finding out that, you know, the boss of Tartarus, you know, the Guildmaster, or I guess you could say End is the Guildmaster, because we found out about that a couple episodes ago, but still, for now, we could say Mardgear's kind of filling in the role. Mardgear at the moment, though, he is active and walking around now. He was slowed down thanks to the Celestial Spirit King, but now he's up and walking, and he's now going to be fighting up against Sting and them. And so we have to wonder... Can Sting and all them, you know, can they really fight Mard Gear? Because, I mean, look what Mard Gear is doing against the Celestial Spirit King. I mean, really take a few moments to consider this, okay? The Celestial Spirit King, what he did was fucking insane. And many have to consider, can Sting and them really put up any form of fight against someone as strong as Mard Gear, if looking at their power standpoint? But, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Thing is is besides the entire event with Mard Gear, we come to find out more about Minerva and her character, what drives her to want to go after Eriza, and also what drove her as a character to begin with, and we get a little bit of backstory to kind of figure out why she is like she is. And so, I'm going to ask the question right now, how many of you right now hate Minerva's father? Because... Seeing this episode of Fairy Tale, it opened up my hatred for her father because I remember when her father was first introduced in the Grand Magic games, he was a crusty bastard, what he did, you know, to sting in them, and just to see how his entire reactions were when he was the guild leader, when we saw him in the Grand Magic games, and then seeing him in this episode with his daughter Minerva, and like yelling at her, saying crying as her weaklings, you know, all these different crusty shit that was just disgusting, because this guy right here was just putting down his daughter on a daily basis, and that's just traumatizing, it really is, I mean, if you had to deal with your father putting you down every fucking day for your entire life, or until like you're 15 or 18, and you had to deal with this daily about your father putting you down saying you're weak you're useless stop crying and you know just many things i mean even see someone that was a, like a friend of yours get killed in front of you that's traumatizing so to see minerva's father we finally find out why she's kind of twisted why minerva kind of acts like she does throughout the last arc and this arc and what drove her to kind of become a demon and like her entire mentality when it came to her guild 
So yeah, I mean, seeing this backstory makes a lot of sense, and it makes you really want to direct your hatred towards her father after seeing the way he treated her. And I mean, any person, depending on how you are, if you're a very young, like, you know, Minerva, and your father or any parental figure that's watching over you probably did that for a very long time, months to years to weeks, whatever, that'll eventually break a kid. It would. It would break a kid if that was done to you on many, many months to years. And that's probably what was done to Minerva. So yeah. Pretty fucking awful. Really awful just seeing that ordeal. And I wonder how many of you right now feel about Minerva's character. Because I remember when I read the manga, there were some very controversial viewpoints of this scene. Because Minerva versus Erza was something that's been hyped up for a very long time. It's something that many have been wanting to see because of the Grand Magic games. And with this, it was kind of like a rematch. And then to see how Minerva's past was revealed, it kind of slings that aside to where there's really no final definite conclusion to this match with this arc and we have to wonder like how do you truly feel about this like do you feel like this was satisfying enough for this like i guess conclusion of minerva versus erza or was this you know disappointing in a certain sense i want to hear your thoughts achievements how do you feel about this conclusion to the fight now besides that, moving on to the next segment, we come to find out that one of the demons of Tartarus is now alive and well on Happy's forehead, or top of his head to be exact, and this was kind of foreshadowed in the filler arc, which I want to take a few moments to really discuss. In the first episode, yeah, it was the first episode, when I reviewed the first episode of the fairy tale filler arc before, you know, the Tartarus arc began, I remember that there was a scene where Happy had like a mushroom. It was talking about a mushroom and Happy had, had had like a mushroom on his head or whatever. It was talked about at the beginning, like the first filler episode. And I remember mentioning in my review, like right at the beginning of the review, like that seems like some foreshadowing. So I foreshadowed this for a very long time. I did. Well, because I knew. I read the manga at the time. But the point I'm getting at is, is the filler actually foreshadowed this event right here with happy having a demon stuck to his fucking head like a mushroom pretty fucking hilarious it really is just the odd things that fairy tale filler foreshadows is just odd it really is so besides that wendy cuts her hair and personally i'm not a big fan of wendy cutting her hair i'm not i mean i i really preferred the longer hair of wendy because it made her look more mature and older and with her haircut, she looks younger, so to say. And, I mean, I know Wendy's that type of character. She's supposed to look young and like a kid. But still, I mean, I really liked her and preferred her with longer hair. I mean, especially when she went into Dragon Force. That looked fucking epic. And to see her with the short hair, I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm sorry. I'm just not a big fan of that type of hairstyle. And then the ending inclusion of the episode with, you know, Sabretooth coming onto the battlefield and about to be going up against Mark Gear, which... <laughs> okay so tell me your thoughts in the comments below how do you all feel about the setup with this episode you all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live please be safe chibi out